April 28, 2016, regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, we're down here at uh, 4, 415 Black Point Road tonight at the district's headquarters. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. Uh, <coughs> Charles Anderson here. Dave Nelson is absent. Uh, Nick Rico here. And Jason Greenby here. Rob McSorley present. Seth Garrison here. And I'm Ben Viola. So approval of minutes. We'll start with the March 24th workshop minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Any corrections or errors? Okay. So all in favor? I abstain. Nick abstain. And then uh, oh, March of the two thousand six regular meetings. Second. Uh, any corrections or comments? Uh, under approval of minutes for the February twenty fifth meeting, it says there was a abstention by Mr. McSorley. I think it was Mr. Garrison. That is correct. I know that we look alike. Scarborough Sanitary District uh, written above it and with water flowing out of the pipe with our telephone Clean number. Clean water. Clean water. Blue water. You like flowing that? out of the pipe with our telephone number at the very bottom of it. Unfortunately, it looks like gray water and some black and white. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's why you get an e packet with everything. So I think Nick mentioned it before. We're going to put it on the letterhead, too. It's a pretty yeah. logo. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm going to put it on the letterhead and also business. Who came right. up with it? Did you come up with that? I worked with somebody to develop it. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, Air, Carl, and, Carl and Paul have started installing the aeration tank mixes. Um, getting ready for uh, the summer. Are those the flights? The, those are fl uh, floating, um, oh, the floating floating mixers awesome. that we purchased. I to, about those. <laughs> yes, yes. And the last year's uh, capital improvement budget. Oh, wonderful. The, to it. Uh, the new generator for pump station two has arrived. 
And uh, once Carl gets done with the mixers, he'll work on that, getting that installed for at pump station too. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Can yes. Go ahead. Uh, what are we doing with the old generator? Uh, we are letting whoever takes out the generator have it as part of the process. It's a generator that's, I think, 35 years old, and the last time we had to buy parts for it, we had to buy the part on eBay. Is that a white engine? Uh, no, I'm trying to remember the, I think it's a Perkins diesel, uh, actually. Okay. Maybe I'll take it out and put it in a sailboat. What's that? Maybe I'll take it out and put it in a sailboat. <laughs> No, thank you. Not the generator, <laughs> just the diesel. Just the diesel? <laughs> I just let the sailboat drift off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> it would anyway. Unmanned. Um, I had several students from the Scarborough High School class reach out to, uh, to me asking questions about the operations here at the San Cave District. Um, I was able to summarize my response into one email for the group. I did hear back from one of the students who thanked me for the information. And I provided a copy of the emails for you to read at your leisure. Uh, we had, I had asked Ken Miles to collect some wastewater samples from the Texas Roadhouse and Red Robin. Um, what we had found is that the wastewater from these facilities far exceeded their typical wastewater strength. From this point forward, we'll be assessing them for a high strength wastewater as allowed in our rate structure. We will also be expanding the sampling to identify any other unknown high strength waste sources that may be out there. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple questions about this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what size of the grease interceptors there? Are they 1,000, 2,000? I believe they're 1,000. 1,000. And? 1,000 gallons. 1,000 gallons, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. uh, the high strength charge that we're going to is that part of our rate structure? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. What is a typical strength for a restaurant? Well, our our what we identify in our rate structure as high strength is anything. I think it's, I, it's either anything over two fifty milligrams per liter for BOD and TSS, okay. and I want to say seven hundred for milligrams per liter. The numbers are written out in the, yep. in the ordinances, mm -hmm. um, and so it, it whatever those numbers are. It's a truck okay. slows out and charges a rate, a high strength rate on that. I'm and just wondering if, you know, given the option, uh, if they would be interested in putting a second grease interceptor in line or a larger one. To, to well, is this a grease issue or is this a I, don't, I, think it's a just a, I think it's just a BOD and TSS issue. I don't really, think it's, it's, not the, it's not extra grease coming out of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I think it's just the uh, nature of the beast there. Oh, really? You think it's food and beer and stuff that they're putting down there that's driving the beast? Well, certainly beer would drive the beast. You mean waste? Yeah. yeah. The waste from there. Uh, yeah. How much higher is the parameters than what's in the... Um, I believe the BOD <coughs> is 900 milligrams per liter. Versus 250? Yeah. And Oof. the... TSS was 700 or vice versa, or somewhere in that range. So it was, it was, it was like significant. Three time, yeah. yeah, okay. okay. It was significant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Little love the What's that? Little love the brewery business. Yes. And just related to that, have we checked as the, uh, the Eastern Butcher Shop on our system as well, too? The Eastern Butcher Yes, it should be the meeting yeah. house. Oh, the meat house. The meat house. Yeah. Um, yes, they are. I'm curious what their BOD looks like, because if you're putting any blood waste and stuff down there, that can drive the BOD through the roof. Put that on our yeah. checklist. <laughs> the old meat house. So, so what you think that drives it up is like, do they, they must have a, uh, a pig or a grinder that grinds up the waste? Or? Um, they could. They could have some type of food macerator. I don't know what, what, what is driving up the waste in, in either one of those cases. Um, what triggered me to test there was I was at a, um, a conference from, uh, here in Scarborough on, on fat oil and grease, actually. And um, it came up 
that the restaurant waste tend to have, they've been finding in general is a lot higher than what people have anticipated in the past and you know, just brought it to people's attention. And so I decided to start you know, taking all of that here and test some of these facilities. So, I'm sorry. You have a question, right? Well, I was going to ask, is there, if they did something to reduce that? If they did? We if they did, did like, I don't want to say free treatment, but if they did something to remove whatever's causing the problem out of their, their waste. With their build right out? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said maybe a bigger recent yeah. receptor if that were to Yeah. You know, is this a function of these wastes getting stronger or lower full fixtures not diluting them as much or it's about the same as it always was, we just didn't realize how strong it was. Probably yes. So are you communicating with these places so that they understand what's happening and get some advance notice that the building structure is going to change and they have the option to try to reduce their waste loading so that just so, so they're fully aware. Yep. Now our, our uh, limits that are in our policy, I, I assume that's on a based on a typical residential unit, what it would load? <coughs> yes. So it's based on uh, typical domestic waste. So the, in, in going back to next question, has there any been any change that would make residential waste any more uh, okay. potent than what has been seen in the past? It, yes, I, I mean, it, it, there, there is that possibility that with the, the use of low flow toilets, the more use of food grinders, did you see an increase in the VOD loadings to the plants? We haven't seen much of a change here in the concentration coming into the plant over the years. It's been fairly consistent. Now, when you design a plant, I'm not as up on this as you guys are, but you design it based upon a certain waste stream and a certain BOD, mm -hmm. and based upon that, dictates the amount of treatment, hence the amount of chemicals and whatnot. Yep. You use, um, uh, use a loading rate per capita, uh, then you add in commercial and industrial based on what the, the makeup is in town, and then every, you know, everything size based on that, a combination size based on both flow and loading, it's different things impact different parent, uh, components of the treatment system. Now we test for our raw limits, right, mm -hmm. before we treat. Mm -hmm. Has there been any substantial, it's been pretty consistent? It's been fairly consistent, yeah. I think it leads me to follow up on Rob's question and one of my own. If this is just endemic of us discovering what restaurants actually truly do and have been doing for decades, and it really doesn't affect what comes into the plant because it's been pr pretty consistent, is it truly a, a, a fair rate hike on their waste strength, even if they've been doing it like this all, all the time for years, decades? Well, I think it is because it still translates into a treatment cost for the facility, that waste loading. And it's, you know, their waste is going to be diluted by other low strength waste or water that are coming mm -hmm. in so that, so that, you know, you're not going to see that high strength waste affecting our overall number of the loading here because they're a small discharge amount, but they still are requiring more treatment, more chemicals, more energy, you know, per uh, per pound of waste. Okay. So I think I think that I think the rate structure is fair. Um, and it may just be that the practices in the restaurant business have changed as much as anything else because our rates, our, I mean our rate structure is 30 years old, 40 Oh, okay, so we've been dealing with restaurants for four decades 
with the same type of rate structure. So if, say, a fictitious restaurant, you know, over on Pine Point somewhere was discharging the same thing over and over again for the past 40 years, we've been charging them for a higher strength waste. Yeah, if, it did, if it's been identified. If it's I, think been the, I think the question it brings up to me is what the engineers are submitting to us for waste loadings for their clients when they come in with a restaurant. The brewery or the pub, for yes. example, on, uh, on 114 has been proposed. We haven't seen that yet. I just came into my office today, actually. Yeah. But did you have preliminary discussions with them on yep. how, the, how the rate was going to work? So they're not going to be shocked when they find out what their monthly bill is going to be. And if it's a brewery that I'm thinking about, they, there's one brewery that's been chopping around in just about every coastal community. No, this is, this is, it's this a different is, one. Yeah, this is a microbrewery. The amount, matter of fact, the amount of beers they're proposing to uh, produce is very, very minimal. Okay. I can't believe we don't have a brewery moving here from another community that would save. <laughs> they'd probably save, like, uh, I can't even. I wouldn't even mention to guess the dollar amount, but they probably save like 60 to 80 percent of their out-of-pocket expense for waste, for wastewater treatment. You know, they have, I can, since I have been here, there's been at least two that have evaluated that option of moving here yeah. and looked at that rate structure and calculated what their sewer bill was, and then used that to. Probably for negotiation. Yeah. In another town. In That's another what. Town. Or in Where your existing work. town. Yeah. That's what it is. So Dave, have you done sampling at other locations to look at the strength of restaurant waste? No, we're expanding. This is yeah. something. This is the we first did. one. That you the first first two that we did, and where it was a big eye opener. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure this will be interesting data for other communities <coughs> to receive. Also, like like you indicated at your conference, that was a kind of a heads up that was given to yeah. you by other people at the conference. Yeah. And I think as this data starts to come together, we get a better database, it'll provide some sharing. And uh, as we gradually expand our monitoring to check out other locations, we should get a pretty good yeah. handle on what's there. A couple more Quick follow -up follow -up questions. No, this is all great. Uh, uh, going back to when the plan is designed or a system is designed, and you know that you're going to have a certain amount of commercial and restaurant and that waste, you, do you take into account that you're going to have higher concentrations? Can I answer that? Go for it. So, so when they, when they, if you're putting in a new plant, and Guilford Sangerville was a good example of that, they had a textile mill there, so you could have just you know, picked up the, all, the, all the residentials and said, okay, we'll treat them with this. And, but they have the, the plant, so the plant kicked in on the cost for the, uh, the plant. The industry kicked in on the cost for the treatment plant, and they designed a treatment plant that would treat Guilford Industries waste, so they didn't have to pre-treat or industrial uh, pre-treatment. And mo mo a, lot of community, a lot of communities would do that, and some of them they have industrial pre-treatment because you don't know, you know, you may have four or five different industries in town, and they have to pre-treat theirs and meet a standard before it's dumped into the, the uh, public sewer. And so it, it's all considered when you, when you design, but once you get a plan, then you, you, you're stuck with that treatment for anything that comes into it. You know, capacity, so, treatment, capacity. Well, capacity, but also for treating that specific waste. So once the we have a treatment plant and there's some industry that comes in with some high strength waste that really wouldn't run well through that design, they have to pre-treat on their site mm -hmm. uh, before they can go into the sewer system. Or this facility would have to upgrade to some degree to accommodate the new high spec place. Mm -hmm. So I think all gets considered in the design one way or the other. Okay. Um, I lost one of my questions. <laughs> You're very good. Thank you for the education. Uh, how much of an uptick in charge would it be for these two businesses that are discharging three times the amount of? Um, let's cost? see. When did you happen to remember either one of those? I can go get them. If you want. Okay. I mean, is it substantial? Uh, one of them is it's over a thousand dollar increase in the sewer bill. 
For a year. For a year? Uh, no. Is it a quarter? Quarter. quarter. Oh. So, thousand dollars per yeah. year extra? And I think their sewer bill was maybe $4,000. So it's basically no. doubling? No. A quarter. 25%. Uh, 4000 Oh, oh. 4, A quarter. 5000 Oh. A quarter. A quarter. A quarter. A quarter. Yeah. So, 16000 to 20000 Yeah. I get it. I, I, she's got the numbers right there, so. So it's an uptake of 25% over there existing there. Like so business is good, they should be able to change it. Yeah, you may have to help me out here. This is the surcharge. That was $1,500. Right. And what would be their original bill without the surcharge? It would be this and this. And the original bill would be two, three, about $3,100. Three, 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 three thousand, and to call it $3,000. Plus, and the surcharge is another fifteen hundred. So fifty percent increase. That's not chunk change. No, but they have the option. They have the option to make changes in their main process. Yeah. How long do they have to the change the process? Yeah, they could possibly recycle. You know, they can, they can change it right away. You know, we, we sample and any quarter, any, this is done every quarterly, so. Okay. I mean, if they reduce their BOD and TSS uh, back down to domestic levels, they would not receive that surcharge okay. in the next quarter. Uh, it's immediate. Um, this, the BOD in this case here actually was 960 milligrams per liter, and the TSS was 1,070. And in the other one, the BOD was 2,070, and the TSS was 720. In our, in our, in our, in our rules haven't changed, so this has been in there. Yeah. No, the rules so haven't changed. Yes. I wonder if there's cleaning solvents and stuff that are jacking out for you. Yeah. Probably. And that, that could be, you know, uh, there... I'm not sure where it would be coming from, but I grew up working in a restaurant and you had the grease interceptor or the grease trap under the sink and all the food waste would never go there. You know, it was drummed into you, don't put it down there because you're going to plug up the plumbing. You know, so it would go into the slot bucket to the pigs. But I'm not sure what modern restaurants do with all their waste. Or I think if, it varies. I think some of them, some of them sort it and have somebody come pick it up to recycle it and compost. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of organic composting going That's on. That's true. Yeah. I think there's lots of options out there. It's just how aggressive people pursue it. And if you're a national chain, it's probably prescribed in your operating format exactly what you're going to do. And it's probably uh, macerators and dumpsters in the parking lot. Yeah. Interesting. We have the same problem in other communities as well. Mm -hmm. Not many communities don't have the high strength component of their rate structure. I know the one that I'm in, I don't think, has one for high strength, just high flows. For industrial and commercial waste? There is no industrial and commercial waste. Yeah, but, you must have, but you must have provisions for it. Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. I have to get up on it. I'm still yeah. new. I'm guessing it's probably something in there, but it's probably not applicable very often. But yeah, it does cost more to treat it because you you know, have to settle that out and oh yes, and oh yeah, buy more air. So yeah. Okay. Thank you, David. Welcome. Uh, Twelve Sylvan Road to the service plug on April fourth. The resident at Twelve Sylvan Road reached out to the town manager and the town council. With regards to the sewer plug, implying that the response from the district was substandard. I assured the town manager and the council that this was not the case and followed up with a detailed account of events, which I previously provided to you. I also provided this account to our insurance carrier. In a follow up phone call uh, from the insurance carrier, they were impressed with the detail of the events and did not see where the district failed. They have yet to follow up with the homeowner. So this is still out with the insurance company, no final decision on how to move forward on their part. 
Southern Maine sewer survey results. Wright Pierce uh, recently conducted the attached sewer rate survey for the towns of Scarborough, Old Orchard Beach, Saco, York, Wells, Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, Obanquick, and Sanford. The annual cost for a typical residential user ranged from $228 per year to $760 per year. Scarborough's annual cost is the second lowest at $396 per year. The survey also compared connection fees, impact fees, septage fees, readiness to serve fees, and II fees. All in all, Scarborough Sanitary District was on par with these other communities. Jay Kennett was the moderator for a jet sea training course on confined space training, which was held at the Clan Bay Parade in Scarborough. Uh, Rudy Hale and Scott Karen uh, attended a three-day NASCO pipeline assessment certification program, including pipeline, manhole, and lateral assessment, all three of which both of them passed. Mm. And uh, I presented at the spring conference this past month, speak on, on the regulations, receiving options, treatment, and operating responsibilities with regards to handling of septage at wastewater treatment facilities. Um, a couple other items. Um, we had a small sewer break of a gravity sewer down on the Pine Point Bridge. Uh, the contractor digging for the bridge uh, caught our uh, gravity sewer with the piece of the bucket and, and cracked the, the bell of the, the sewer pipe. Um, they immediately called us. There was no overflow of any type. Um, and they uh, repaired, repaired it right away. Um, and then the other thing is H2S sampling. I purchased a, uh, a monitoring device called an odor logger. It allows me to, to record um, H2S levels out in the collection system and in wet wells over a period of a, a week of time. It has a range of 0 to 1,000 milligrams per liter, so you know, it won't get overwhelmed by high uh, H2S. And so we've been uh, starting to deploy it out into some of the pump stations and terminus uh, force main manholes and starting to collect some data on H2S. Oh, so. And that is it for my operations report. Oh, thank you. Any questions that we didn't cover on the trustees? All right, so moving on to correspondence. Uh, DEP inspection report. On March 16th, DEP conducted their biannual inspection of the district's operations. As noted in, in this report, under observations, they, operate, they found the operations and maintenance uh, at this facility are excellent. So I just wanted to pass that on. Good job, And staff. And staff. Primarily. So that was Matt Height? That was Matt Height. Yeah. No comments? Or did you have comments? No, this is the only one. comment. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess our checks are checks to the to pay off, right? <laughs> so, so Matt good. likes us. He uses us as a reference all the time. Okay, great. So, old business? So his, his observation was simply operation and maintenance are excellent at this facility. Yeah. <laughs> After a lot of satisfactory. Uh, a lot of satisfactory, absolutely. Yeah. Satisfactory, yeah. and we get a compliment, compliment on the observation. So I think that's great. That's what we hope to, hope to continue. Praise. And we have one more item. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 I reached out to our legal counsel with regards to developing approaches to collecting capacity reserve fees owed on accounts that have exceeded approvals. Here are some of the thoughts. Um, send a letter to all accounts explaining how the district administrators capacity reserve charges and what it is. Explain that the district will be undergoing a system-wide analysis of each account with respect to actual use that it is, as it relates to their approved flows. Further explain that the actual flows exceed approved flows. Those exceedances are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve charges. We should also provide some information about the time frame which we will undertake the analysis, coupled with some general advice about ways users might reduce usage in order to avoid increased charges. Um, this would delay 
uh, imposition of the capacity reserve charges. It can be used as a period of time to curb their usage. Uh, one option is also possibly put in the district's website. I copy the, the letter on the district's website, and as well as information regarding approved flows and actual usages and defensive charges. Uh, there are advantages to having all that. Your, our accounts go through the process at the same time in terms of being treated similarly and making sure folks have similar opportunity to make changes in advance. However, there is the issue of staff resources needed to fully develop the program to address the interaction with affected accounts. It could be a few phases, but if notice is provided to each subset in the same way, they thought that should also suffice. So what I plan on doing is working with the legal counsel to develop a letter for the trustees to review while we further consider the implementation options in front of us. Would this be something you might want to hire something or some help on to track down? Or is that something, you're the one that does most of the work or just when you do the work? Me. Yeah. yeah. So is that something to be able to get it all together? Would it be something we um, we could, I, it, it takes a bit of finesse to go through some of these approvals to, to, to extract some of the information. It's not uh, always readily available. You gotta, you gotta do a little bit of digging. So I'd be a little hesitant to hire, hire out some of that. Yeah. Now I was just thinking you like to work, I know you like to work on weekends, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, one option is maybe we hire you know, hire somebody to to do the initial go through, and all the ones that are easily documented and it's clear, they could fill it out, and then um, that just leaves the more complicated ones to return to. Are you thinking like maybe a paralegal intern or something like that over the summer? Engineering. Uh, I'm thinking more like an engineer. Yeah, they're saying the same thing. Engineering intern from. I know a computer mean? science major. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a daunting task. It's a lot of work, and I think you're going to need to reach out. It's probably something to consider. Yeah, so an, yeah, an intern would work. I hadn't thought about that. An intern for the summer would work. When he or she is bored, you can go out and mow lawns. It's like they cut. It's like shovel. It can also fly the mower. Set <laughs> the grubs are taken care of once the lawn is Yeah, you like that? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you can think about that. Okay. Well, no, that's. I, that I, would, I, I wish I thought it was somebody aerating the lawn. No, that's. <laughs> not, <laughs> the skunks, skunks, are skunks, the skunks are aerating the lawn. Go ahead, Rob. I uh, assume this only really applies to commercial accounts because Correct. residential account is a, a standard unit. Uh, in reading through this, in the prior discussion over concentration of waste, I see something that can dovetail together uh, relative to notifications. You know, if we're going to notify people, then we're going to be looking at, you know, the amount. That's a good point. Let them know that we're going to also be taking, because we are seeing issues, and they can be, feel free to contact us. Would we kindly use now? Do we charge them for the sampling? <coughs> the sampling? Okay. So if somebody wanted to take a proactive measure and have a sample, I'm just throwing yeah. out ideas. Yeah. You know, we'll come and sample your sewage. And let you know where you sit. We're going to do it anyway, right? Most likely. Well, I think the difficulty there would be if you just throw it open to anybody to call, you may get people who are just concerned about the fact that they're getting that there's public notices out there, and we may we we may not be targeting the resource use exactly the way that we should. If we make it that you can call us for a discussion, and if it's a particular use that you know would be an issue, then you can recommend it, right? And, and yeah. 
value of opening it up. It's just an idea to throw out there. Yeah, no, it's a good one. But, you know, if we're going to go out there and say, hey, we're going to be looking at this stuff, or we're going to be looking at this too, by the way, and that way, you know, we're giving a fair warning. Mm. I think that's what the attorney is trying to do is say, hey, we're going to put this out there, you put you on notice, you have some time to rectify your own problem, but if you don't, a copy of our account receivable reports. I can provide you with information, this information at any time, if so desired. However, as you know, Maine law dictates specifically how and when we may start to lien process and the fees we may charge. We, we may only start to lien process when amounts become over 90 days past due and burnt mature, so that we should wait an additional 30 days since we give them a 30 days uh, from the end of the quarter of the day. Therefore, we actually can't start the process until accounts are 120 days past due. I certainly can provide whatever information the trustees desire. Just uh, please let me know exactly what you want in the frequency. Um, it, it's one of those numbers that are changing daily. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's really the stuff that's the long term. The 120. Yeah. Is that something you want? On a monthly basis? Or? I don't know if it needs to be monthly, but you know, periodically would be good. And the other part of that, I think, was just making sure that we're equitable on how we're doing that and making sure we're recovering reasonable fees for this as well, too, so that people are not intentionally prolonging the process, that yeah. we recover reasonable fees back to discourage we people. We do as, as what we can yeah. that the law allows. I hate to ask so many questions, uh, no. um, but on your report, A, C, and I, I assume something commercial, one's industrial, A is something else? Active. Active accounts. Oh, okay. Active accounts, commercial accounts, and industrial accounts, right? Inactive. A. Oh, inactive? What's C? Mm -hmm. C is? Closed? Closed. Okay. Yeah, it's account and speed. The, uh, the eminent engineer is only on that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. So I think we used to do these yearly. We get a, just a, a report on, on the accounts receivable. Does that seem... Yeah, I, think that's, I don't remember ever seeing that. You know, I remember we used to get them yearly. I think Mike was on it once. Well, I think we got it around budget time. Yeah. You know, just something like that. Like a way to help get him on uh, cash flow and we understood whether we were meet budget or not meet budget. And so just an accounting question related to that. So when we have a um, an overdue account that goes to lien process, do we write it off at that point and then recover it in as you know? No, because you first send out the 30-day notice, which has um, right. the certified. They have 30 days to pay. Yeah. Okay, and then you put the lien on, and then new charges come, but you've already leaned that, and then interest keeps accruing on those old charges, and it becomes one lump. I guess so. I'm curious about when we write off those liens. We don't. No, no we don't. We are a guaranteed payment on, on everything, sooner or later, because when property changes hands, the banks have to clear the title. Right, I understand that, but if, I mean, if it's a lien could sit on the property for 10 years... No. You if can foreclose is after 18 months. Right. If we us. choose to foreclose on it, do we choose to foreclose well, it on it? It's an automatic foreclosure okay. process. So we have, the last one that happened was the one that the town had a lien on also, and they just cleared that up. And we have okay. a, if, if the town realizes that we have a lien and they have one, they can't release it, we have an agreement with them. They won't do a... Uh, a lien waiver. They won't, they won't do a lien release, you know, to give it back or sell the property. So, if not, and if they have a mortgage on it, the mortgage company will pay us because they can lose their interest in that property. Because they know in some communities they don't have automatic foreclosure on the liens, and there are some properties that are not um, 
there's no mortgage on it that they have gone for years and years and years carrying the lien on the property. If we could have one that foreclosed, and then if you choose not to take the property, you can do a waiver of foreclosure, or you can allow them to do, you know, what you want to do a payment agreement, and then just discharge it once it's paid. So that I'm assuming is a small, very, that's very, very small, small fraction. Yeah. Fraction. There, there, there are occasions that that does occur, but um, majority of the, the uh, lien notices go off the. There's a mortgage on the property, and the mortgage holder ends up paying. So if it's 18 months, the maximum we're really carrying stuff is two years. Normally. Okay. But then, depends, I mean, in a full closure, we become de facto owners of the property, right? If you choose to take physical possession of the property, yes, actually you do. Like if they did a title search, that actual owner couldn't, he doesn't actually have title to it. If he went to get a, a loan on it or sell that property, he's not the actual owner of record on that property. So when we go that route, do we automatically get a liability insurance for that property if we own it? We haven't had that. We, yeah. had that we, have, we haven't taken possession of the property. never taken possession of the property. The foreclosure occurs, but we don't take possession. Okay. Just a suggestion that if there the foreclosure is... occurs and we become the de facto owner, even if we don't take possession, we should. There is, if it's left, if it's like a town tax lien, if you know that property is vacant for so many days and you've taken possession of that, mm -hmm. you've, then you have to put it on your insurance. So, but All right. you just have to keep an eye on all those properties. And We're lucky we probably don't have a huge amount of foreclosed properties that are sitting up there. I don't think we have any. The, mo the, the mortgage companies and banks spend a lot of time and energy monitoring foreclosures on any of these. If, and obviously, you know, yeah. you're, you become a default of your mortgage before we foreclose, and the banks are anxious in protecting their security on these loans, so pretty much they take care of everything. So the it's a very nice it, procedure for us. It is a very good procedure. The challenge is when it's an older couple and there is no mortgage, and it's right. foreclosed, what do you do? Oh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm sure there are other people that are going after that. I, let's put it this way. The sewer bills. We, <laughs> we haven't had that issue raised in as long as you've been a trustee. That's good to know. All right. it's just, I've been in another district for nine months, and it's already happened. Yeah. Just be glad you're not in Detroit or one of the other places yes. where it's a frequent <laughs> occurrence. Let's get more property than they wish to. So, new business? Are we going to become susceptible? I believe so. Okay, so we'll move on to new business. Um, 95 Pleasant Hill Road. On behalf of Abco Rental and Storage, uh, Stan Tech is requesting district approval to connect and discharge of the sewer, the sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed 32,100 square foot building. The proposed building cons consists of 12 small tenant units, each with a bathroom and hospital. <coughs> the site contains an existing inch sanitary district sewer line with an easement over uh, which over which the proposed building is to be located. Thus, they are proposing a realignment of the existing sewer as shown in their drawings. The site was originally approved for a flow of, uh, I have a typo in here, it's actually 105 gallons per day, not 160. They're requesting approval for additional flow of 600 gallons per day as sanitary wastewater flow, which is based on a fraction of four employees per unit at 12 gallons per day per employee. The entire site would be needed by one water meter. Uh, they recommend approval with the uh, following conditions. Um, 600 gallons of capacity reserve fee, uh, 600 gallons per day subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $14.94 per gallon. And is adjusted monthly based on the ENR construction cost index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due is $8,964. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Any flow above the 705 gallons per day will be subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. 
How much was that? 705 or 760? 705. You did the other one, 105. Sorry. The 160 was uh, actually 105. Uh, the flow is limited to 705 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of the approved the Mahler flow characteristic of subject to additional approvals. Modification of existing easement must be completed and reported to the satisfaction of the district superintendent and uh, uh, our legal counsel. All costs associated with modification to and reporting of the existing easement will be paid by the owner of the property. Uh, the sewer permit will not be issued until such time as the associated use and costs are paid in the revised sewer. Added a uh, sampling manhole for san uh, sanitary sewer service for the proposed building. Uh, a sewer extension permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work can be completed. Sewer permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. No floor drain shall be permitted in the garage or storage areas. All bulk chemical storage areas shall have secondary containment. Um, the district reserves the right to approve future tenants to ensure compliance with these conditions. Uh, final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permits. A professionally surveyed electronic geo reference CAD drawing, stamped PDF to CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where this is located. This you need a motion. You need a motion. Okay. A motion to approve. Second. Subject to the conditions. Subject to the conditions that the superintendent has put forth. Where are we? Exactly, yeah. Uh, Sam Wood Trucking. Yeah. Oh, Pleasant Hill. Um, pine Tree Waste. This, uh, Pleasant Hill Road is coming down here. You go, uh, just before you go over the railroad tracks, the bridge for the railroad tracks going down Pleasant Hill Road. Okay, this is the railroad tracks. That's the railroad okay. tracks right there. I know you, that, take, huh? you take that right into um, yeah. Pine Tree Waste, and then you take a hard left, and they're in the back. Back in that area there. So Route One's that way. Route One is that way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Caterpillar equipment's up here on the way. Okay. Oh. Do we have the right to approve future plans or do we just need to be notified of them? We, well, that, that was added one time. We added uh, that when I'm trying to remember what project it was. It was up on. Would go green landscaping on Royal Ridge Road. They had tenants. We just wanted to make we sure. Concerned about yeah, what the concerned tenants to be. What the tenants going to be? If it's going to be a restaurant, what's their flow going to be? Um, you know, because uh, we get we get change out of I, tenants all the time. I understand. I, I it's not the condition; it's the wording that I was okay. questioning. Okay. But I I agree with the condition. I'm okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, what kind of facility is this actually going to be? It says rental and storage unit. Is this rental space to store people's stuff? Are people going to be living there? Is it retail space? It's, uh, it's primarily focusing on contractor type, uh, uh, like the landscaper or even a builder could rent some space oh, for okay. equipment. Of, yeah. So yeah. office type stuff? For well, equipment and a small office. Oh, okay. Equipment storage and a small office. I think they, they call them something called a garage aminiums. Garage aminiums, yes. Garage aminiums. They're, they're supposedly startup businesses. Who yeah, will, they rent these and yeah, they call it incubator space to incubator start, space. start new businesses. So we're all set on the the relocation of our line. Yeah, it's a very simple <coughs> relocation, actually. Um, it's in the yellow now. We're we'll moving it to the correct. Okay. I get those right. Colorblind, but I can see those. So. It's 
ask it. Any questions? Why I originally jogged that way versus the other way when it was designed, it, I can't figure out. But this. Well, we're just changing two 90 degree angles for two 90 degree angles. <laughs> pretty much. It's a pretty easy realignment. Okay. All in favor? Three month budget summary is included in the packet and recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second. Any questions on the budget summary? Yes. So, um, yeah, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, a couple of items that are for the month, for the month are. Salaries and wages, employee benefits, and uh, material supplies and equipment are uh, dramatically over for the for the month uh, actual versus the month budget. And I'm just curious as to whether you expect those are going to even out, or is there a big trend here that we had a five-week pay period? Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, but the materials and supplies and equipment, just, you know, just a tiny thing. Okay. Yeah. So you, you think that those will be back tracking on that? Yeah. Great. So all in favor? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Trustee comments. We can start with Jason. It's pretty quiet tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, again, thanks to the staff, as always, some more great news from our folks, uh, friends at DEP, so congrats to Dave and the staff on that, and uh, that's all I have tonight. Hope uh, Trustee Nelson feels better and uh, can join us next time. No comment. Uh, we want to commend staff. Uh, once again, for all their hard work, as evident in the report. Um, it was nice that uh, I went to a uh, seminar on Tuesday and got to spend a good part of the day with our superintendent and uh, uh, employee Drake Gate, Jay Kennett, and uh, at a uh, conference relative to sewer pumping sanctions and whatnot. Um, and uh, just seeing the questions that Jay asked is indicative of uh, our staff really taking uh, the initiative to learn and understand and whatnot. He was actually awarded with a gift because he had such a good question, which I really <laughs> wanted, but you know, I guess I don't ask the right questions. But uh, it's just indicative, and especially in our report we got this month, uh, the, seeing that the staff is going out there and leading discussions or improving themselves is a really good thing and I applaud them for that. Um, just wonder, um, I had this feeling having looked at our webpage during the last month that our website is in general need of updating. Are you um, pursuing that in any way? It, it has been on my radar to, to do it. I've been trying to make a concerted effort to make sure uh, the agendas and the minutes are posted. Thank you, Wendy, on that. Um, and getting various news posted on the website and correcting telephone numbers <laughs> as we come away. But the, the general format of it, it's not mobile friendly. I, it, it, it's well, I mean, I'm, I'm really more concerned about the content of it and mm -hmm. sure that the content is up to date. And oh, the con yeah, the content and, is. And some of it seems like we're carrying old, old items on the website that probably really aren't didn't strike me as being totally relevant okay. anymore. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're just tracking that. Um, and then um, along that line, this Southern Maine survey results for uh, wastewater fees. Is there a way, I know we, we had a survey a year or so ago and we posted the results of that on our website. And if there's a way to include a link to the Southern Maine survey results on our website, 
that would be a good piece of information for folks to be able to look at and see. And I think it's a, another favorable comparison to what our ratepayers are paying versus other communities. And so if there's a way, I don't want to reproduce it because it's not our work on our website, but if we could post the link so that if folks wanted to pursue that, they'd have an opportunity to do it. Um, and uh, I want to echo the other trustees' comments to credit you for the outreach in schools and uh, Jay for his work uh, presenting at the conferences and to our staff who, um, who uh, sought out the new certifications for the pipeline assessment certifications. I think that that's all great positive signs and very active and engaged workforce and, uh, and I think that's just a great uh, credit to you and to the staff to continue with that uh, momentum to stay involved with those types of activities. It pays huge dividends for the district and the ratepayers in the long term, so um, I'm real happy to see that. just want to acknowledge it and thank you and staff for continuing to pursue those, those avenues. So, and this last month, I had called Dave about uh, the, our emails, and I, I had asked Dave to check with the uh, town clerk on how the town council does their emails, where they, they have an email address to the, to the town. And uh, I'm thinking we might want to do ours that way as well. Well, I don't want to get into Hillary's problem, so, <laughs> <laughs> so if, you have a, if you have a solution to that, that would be uh, great. Do you well, run Exchange Server here? Yeah. So we'll, we'll be looking into that. Just and it's basically so if anyone has a foyer, we don't have to come in and look at your email, your personal email, or your personal email to get the information. We'll all be on on that uh, that site. Well, if you're running Exchange Server, that means we could have calendars and all kinds of stuff electronically, and you could post updates on it and all that stuff yeah. as well too. Wow. Because yeah. I really need another calendar on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we're at the point where we need to hand out iPads. So I think the town council has iPads sent out, but uh, we don't. Our packets aren't that big enough to. Do our emails have to be on that website? Uh, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a conversation with our legal counsel. I don't with ours don't have that. trustee emails, and nor do they have trustee phone numbers. They just have names. That's it. If you want to find them, go find them. I tell you, I had to do that for one district because Wells, yeah. the guy down there. Hey. <laughs> I heard he's deliberately that way. Uh, obstructionist, anti-business, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> other, like other than that, we, I think we're doing a great job. Uh, I think we're doing a good job on the emails. It's just, you know, we, we, we want to make sure we don't have a uh, Hillary issue with the the, uh, yeah. I know Ben's especially sensitive. Yeah. So uh, I think staff's doing a great job. Uh, it's a lot of work to run down these uh, overruns on on capacity reserve, and, and I like Charlie's idea of uh, possibly hiring a summer intern and look into that. I know University of Maine probably would be the best place for us to get one. Or. Who's your son going in? <laughs> Gordon College. <laughs>